A shalom. All praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone that rule well. Through the scriptures, peace to the hopeful elect. This is the brother Kaya coming from GMS, Indiana, down here in Indianapolis. And I'm going to do a lesson um, regarding the northern kingdom being Israelites. The northern kingdom consists of uh, what we know as so-called Native Americans, you know, so-called Puerto Ricans, which is the tribe of Ephraim. You know, Native Americans, the tribe of Gad, uh, the tribe of Reuben, which is the Seminole Indians, and, uh, you know, on down, you know, the so-called Mexicans, that's the tribe of Issachar, all right, because it ain't just no no black, all right? It ain't just, oh, oh, you got people out there that's teaching that all Israelites are black, all right? Now, pardon me, <clears throat> sorry about that. Now, the scripture speaks about the Lord's heritage is a speckled bird. All right. Matter of fact, I'm going to get into other apps so we can look up that word speckled. If anything speckled is, is spotted. All right. And you got some birds that got speckles that's different colors. All right. I know it was in there nine times. OK, this is Jeremiah 12 and nine. It says, my inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. Who, who's the Lord's heritage? The Israelites. All right. So what's a speckled bird? All right. In the Hebrew. Tazabawai. Colored. Variegated. Speckled. All right. So it's so it's colored. All right. Let's look up variegated. What's that? What's that talking about? That's an interesting word. Very gated. Look at that. Exhibiting different colors, especially as irregular patches or streaks. So that's the 12 tribes, man. The 12 tribes of Israel, we range from very dark to very light on the color spectrum. All right. Now, going back into the scripture. It says, my inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Who the birds round about? That's all the other nations. When you read Psalm 83, it speaks about the, the, the council, all right, or the, the confederacy, the confederacy of all these other nations to be against us, all right? It says, come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to devour, all right? So another thing that connects us is these curses, when you read, uh, what is that? Deuteronomy 28. I'll read, uh, I'll jump around a little bit. It says, uh, I'm going to start at uh, 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, so from verse 15 on down to 68, or uh, or 16 rather, 16 to 68, is pure negative things that will happen to the people to the people of the Lord. But these negative things are proof that these are the children of the Lord. All right, this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, and uh, uh, I'll start at 45. It says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. And shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for wonder and upon thy seed forever. So the word sign means proof or, or facts. So here's the evidence that these people are Israelites, that they under all of these curses unanimously. All right. Because we can say what we want to say. Oh, well, this happened to this people in, in, in this hist historical time frame and these people was in slavery. But ain't nothing been done to the Israelites under the whole heaven. All right. Scripture says that. Scripture says what happened to us ain't been done under the whole heaven. All right. Is that Daniel? Uh. Daniel 9 and 12, and he had confirmed his words, which he spanked against us and against our judges that judged us. 
by bringing upon us a great evil. Right. We, I just read that in Deuteronomy 28. It says, for under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Yeah, who been beaten to the point? Wait, matter of fact, who was who went to slavery in slave ships? All right, because Deuteronomy 28, 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And uh, a lot of history that's not taught is that Native Americans, they were already over here in Egypt because America is spiritually Egypt, spiritually Babylon, spiritually Sodom, right? The Native Americans was already over here, but they went on slave ships too. They went on slave ships back uh, to, to Spain, all right? Or, or some of the, uh, the Tainus and the Arawaks specifically, they went back over there to Spain and Portugal in that region. But furthermore, over there in the, the area of the 13 original colonies, uh, they went to uh, some of them, the, the Wampanoags and those, some of those tribes, they went to slavery over there in England. So the curses apply to all the, the tribes, respectfully, you know. Now, let me see what else I got written down. All right, this is a... Uh, Grab some of these real quick before we get into the actual crux of the lesson. Um, Hosea 5 and 3. It says, I know Ephraim and Israel is not here for me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom and Israel is defiled. All right. But ultimately, the, the uh, Israel is, is the there was a, a split. You know, the southern the southern kingdom was the so-called dark ones uh, today. Uh, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, so-called Negroes. All right. But the Lord said Israel is not here from him. All right. He know he know who the uh, who who his people are. All right. He know who the whether it be northern kingdom or southern kingdom. All right. He know the scriptures called the most high the father of spirits. He know the spirits of all these people. He created them. All right. He know the spirits that he chose to put in what race and what. All right. And these people identify with us because what? You got the curses that they all under. All right. That, uh, I, I ain't going to them that much. But when you read Deuteronomy 28, the, uh, the scripture says, I shall send the people uh, against you from far. All right. And and they came from uh, what's that? They came from the eastern hemisphere and they came to the west. The so-called white people, the conquistadors, and respectively, when they came on down, the, the settlers and all of that. Yeah, they came from far. Came from a far place, and they came over here, and they totally upended and rerouted the, the lives and the, 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 the customs and the practices of a whole race and nation of people. All right? And now you got people saying that these people now are not Israelites. Uh, one of the one of the arguments is because they got their own language and their own land or whatever. But what you got to understand is, first of all, they ain't got their own language because we all were speaking Hebrew. They speak the language that they was colonized under. You know, you go over there in Guatemala and Nicaragua, they all speak Spanish. And, you know, you go down there to South America, uh, uh, Brazil, some of them, Bolivia, Peru, some of them countries, they speak Portuguese. They speak the language of, of the people that conquered them. And they celebrate Christmas and, and these holidays and all that, too. All right. But the scripture says, uh, where was I going with that? I brought that out. The, uh, right. But right. Because you got some people saying that. Uh, that uh, they can't be Israelites because they got their own government. They got their own land. They got their own country or whatever. But a lot of those be puppet. Those are puppet governments. Those those leaders of, of those countries don't be having their people's interest in the, uh, at the best of heart. They be having the interest of the interna International Monetary Fund, the elites. All right. When you look at the Panama deception, when you look at the, the leaders and rulers of Brazil, the people in power from Brazil specifically, they directly descended from um, the, the Portuguese settlers because there's documentaries you can watch. There weren't enough women in Portugal. All right. There wasn't enough women. So they was actually encouraged 
to take on the, the, the women of the land of Brazil. I mean, uh, yeah, when they came to Brazil, they was encouraged to take on the land, take on the women from the land of Brazil and what? And produce children and produce seeds, produce heirs. And those heirs inherited the riches and the offices and the power. But guess what? They might have they, they kept some of the, the uh, you know, the uh, the features of them, of their mothers. But ultimately, their spirit, regardless how they look on the on the, on the inside, I mean, on the outside, ultimately who they are spiritually, they Edomites or they or heathens. All right. And they know they don't got the Brazilian people best interest at mind because they're not Brazilian. You are the scripture speaks about you are what your father is. All right. Grab something else real quick. This is uh Matthew 13 and 24. It says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. All right. So the uh where well, the parable the parable gonna explain it. It says, but when the and when you look up tares, tares resemble wheat. It looks like wheat, but it's not actually wheat. All right, it's a false wheat. It says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had the tares? Because who have seed? Men. Seed produce children. The, the good seed is the children of the most high. All right. It says, he said unto them, an enemy have done this. See, we opened up earlier about the, the heritage of the Lord is the speckled bird. And they say the other birds have, have, have tried to devour him. So these other birds represent other nations. These other nations are our enemies. All right. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. So that's why we don't go back and forth. We, we hear at Great Millstone, the, the tutelage and the teachers of the apostles and elders and the men on down. We, we're not big on the outward appearance. All right? Because if you focus on the outward appearance, you could be uh, mishandling the children of the Lord. All right? They got a video a while ago. This one dude was from Ghana and and uh, Captain Cesariac of the ISUPK said he was a heathen. He wasn't Israelite because he was from Ghana. All right. Which you can clearly tell he was a little kid too. He looked about, you know, adolescent age somewhere. You can tell the kid was a Jake, you know, or an Israelite rather. All right. And so that's why you don't judge off the outward appearance like men do. You judge off the uh, off the spirit like the most high do. And it, there's a spirit that separates the children of is, is, uh, the children of Israel from all these other heathen nations. All right. Because with us being the, the children of the most high, that comes with innate, innate gifts. We just naturally better that the heathens at certain stuff like you might not be able to dance amongst amongst your own people, amongst other Israelites. But you 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 go out to a company party and you know you have a few drinks and move a little bit, dance a little bit. Everybody thinks you the best dancer now. You looking like amongst all these other nations, you like what? I, I can't dance. They like no, you're really good. You know, because we we the, we the children of Israel. We you know, uh, the scripture speaks about us as uh we're the first fruits unto the um unto the Most High. And when you go into that word first fruits, it goes to like choice, like the choicest part, the best part, the chief part, you know. Anyways, it says, uh, but he said, nay, let's why you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. So, right. That's what he was. That's what Captain Cesario ended up doing in that video that I've seen. He ended up rooting up a wheat, the true seed. All right. In the in the in the effects of trying to discern based off, you know, like no, nah, the scriptures say, like, look, we judge everything by the spirit. Look, if we teaching these words, and you you gravitating to these words, you an Israelite. If you believe in these words, and you and you accept, and if you and hey, if you don't believe, 
You 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 can still be an Israelite. You just not an Israelite of the Most High. All right. You just you you because you got all people that don't believe in this. They believe in Christianity, witchcraft, whatever they want to believe in. That's cool. I mean, not that's cool, but you know they they believe what they believe. So they just Israelites in the flesh. You know, because being to be an Israelite is a bloodline. But it says, uh, let let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Right. And the, the reapers represents the angels. All right. Because angels are perfect. All right. The Lord gave them the knowledge to know exactly who everybody is. All right. I'm going to just jump to uh, a part where he, uh, he explained the parable. Jump to verse 37. He answered and said unto him, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. All right? The enemy that sold them is the devil. Now, the word devil means deceiver. What If you had to pick a race of people that is the ultimate deceivers, ultimate, use ultimate deception, the ultimate liar is the only one person fit that bill, whether you want to, you know, stay true to reality or not. It says the enemy that saw them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the weeper and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in a fire. So shall it be. So shall it be in the end of this world. Right. So like I was saying about, uh, you know, those other countries that people, you know, People who liken themselves to being the truth and want to say that they not Israelites because they got their own land and they got this and then the third. Look, they is they is oppressed. Those are puppet governments. All right. That's just like when we was under a puppet government under when Rome, when we was a. Uh, when you go into the, the, the Roman Empire, when Israel was a was a was a vassal to the Roman state headed by the Heronian dynasty. All right. But anyway, uh, let me jump to Joshua. Joshua 22 and 16. It says, thus said the whole congregation of the Lord. What trespass is this that you have committed against the God of Israel? To turn away this day from following the Lord and that ye have builded you an altar that ye might rebel this day against the Lord. All right. So a little background noise. When the, uh, when Joshua was given the tribes their inheritance, uh, a little background noise, a little background information. Um, the tribe of Reuben and Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh got their inheritance on the east all right, of the Jordan River. All right. So this is what they got. To say. This is what they say. This Joshua speaking, though, it says is the order congregation. It says is the iniquity of Peor too little for us from which we are not cleansed until this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord. But that you must turn away this day from following the Lord. And it will be seeing you rebel today against the Lord that tomorrow he will be wroth with the whole congregation of Israel. Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass ye over unto the land of the possession of the Lord. Wherein the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth and take possession among us. Right. See, because they was on the other side of the Jordan River. He like, look, if it's some if there's a problem. All right. Well, then come and find some land over here with us. It says, but we bail not against the Lord, nor rebel against us and building you an altar beside the altar of the Lord, our God. All right. Because they built an altar and they like, uh oh, they finna go and worship some idols or something. So they come in to check them. You know, they imploring them like, hey, woo woo. It says, did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel and that man perished not alone in his iniquity? This is the point. Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh answered and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel, the Lord, it says, Yahweh, God of gods, Yahweh, God of gods, he knoweth and Israel, he shall know if it be in rebellion or if in transgression against the Lord. Save us not this day that we have built us an altar to turn from following the Lord or if to offer their own burnt offering or meat offering or if to offer peace offerings their own. Let the Lord himself require it. 
And if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying in time to come, your children might speak unto our children, saying, what have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us. The Jordan River, it was it separated them. So they basically was thinking like we need to well, we'll read. It says, ye children of Reuben and children of Gad, ye have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Therefore, we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us, that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. So they was thinking in the, in the futures to come in the generations to come, there's a this river separating us. So let's let's have some type of memorial or monument over here. That's, you know, the Lord had them in that spirit, which is beautiful because that's the same thing. That's now there's memorials and various monuments over here in the Americas that let you know that the inhabitants of this place have to be Israelites. There's books on it. There's secular books on it. One of the authors, uh, uh, John Adair, uh, James Adair. I think that's his name. Yeah, you get that book. It's probably a couple hundred dollars. Let me see. What did he write? Yeah, this is him. The history of the history of the of the American Indians. All right. And from traveling and living amongst them. He concluded that they was Israelites. But now, furthermore, that ain't it. You got pyramids, you got ziggurats, you got uh they they were fringes, not just them. I'm talking about all of all the inhabitants, the uh the, the original inhabitants of Central America, all right, Native America, all right, Central America, Latin America, North America, all of that, man. The customs and practices go into many of them, not all of them, because they did go off and serve idols. But many of them line up with the scriptures and one nobody else do one nobody else doing that. As far as if you're just looking at a, 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 a particular people group from around the world, you know, it's too many attributes that specifically apply to the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans in regards to being the children of the Lord. Now, here's a video on YouTube where they going into some of the monuments and historical facts that was left. Play it is. Let me show you one more connection. In 1860, David Wyrick, he's a guy who surveyed the Newark earthworks. He was digging into a mound near those earthworks and he found a wooden coffin made of oak. They opened up the coffin and found a skeleton of a man holding a little box. It was about 8.10 inches in size. The box had been cemented shut here. This, by the way, is sitting in Ohio. Well, he opened up the box and he found a little man inside, a little black stone. They took it to scholars and they looked at it. The man seems to be carrying something and there's writing here. At first, they couldn't recognize. The writing is, they thought in 1860, some sort of Hebrew. Well, finally, about 20 years later, they found some rabbis living in the area and the rabbis looked at that. And they could read it. They said it was an old, old kind of block Hebrew, uh, block Hebrew, and it was a rendition of the Ten Commandments. Now, this is another piece. Block Hebrew. They said they'd never seen anything like it. Mainstream archaeologists at the time called this a hoax. But then in 1900, or just about after 1900, in Israel, they found the same block style Hebrew writing. Mainstream archaeologists still dismiss the findings. They found it in Israel and they found it in Ohio. But there was another stone that they found that they couldn't argue. This is the Bat Creek Stone. It was found during the course of an official Smithsonian evacuation. The Smithsonian didn't understand the, uh, uh, the meaning of the writing on the stone. They thought it was Cherokee since it came from Cherokee country. They didn't realize that it's actually Hebrew. They had published this originally upside down. They threw it in a box at the bottom of the Smithsonian, put it in the basement. 
many years later, a scholar took it out of the box. And as many, and as many artifacts and historical writings and things that's out there that these rich elites got access to. Why do you think they always going and doing dig sites or archaeological things to see if the, uh, by the Bible? That's all they do. Anytime you're looking up some archae archaeological thing, it's always connected to the Bible in some type of way. They don't, they don't, they don't, be, you don't see nothing, oh, archaeological tracing these people, uh, uh, the Mormons, or tracing the, the, the Muslims. Or, it's, always the, it's always the Bible. And they always, they, they come up with findings and they destroy things and deface things and keep things. All right. Because knowledge is power, man. And they've been, and they've been, they've been ruling through, through the ignorance of, of people for centuries, man. But now what the Lord said, the Lord says what? That uh, in the end, knowledge shall be increased. All right. Looked at it. And went, oh my gosh, it's upside down. It's Phoenician, ancient Hebrew. So what's going on here? What is that about? Where is that history? I'll show you in a few minutes, and we're going to have a conversation, and I'm going to show you some more things that the Smithsonian... And I'll, uh, let me make sure I copy this link, put it in the description if you want to keep watching it. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh... Let me see what I'm gonna grab. This is uh the book of Psalms. Sixty and seven. It says Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is also the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. All right, now Gilead is actually is actually in the land of uh Gad. Uh, Reuben and uh, and Manasseh. Now I don't I don't know if it, the way the scripture reads it make it seem like it's a it's a large land mass that share different sections of it by the tribe by the various tribes. But for a fact, it's located on the east of of the Jordan where they was residing at. But the Lord said that is Gilead is mine. All right. And Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. And Ephraim is the head of the northern kingdom. That's the so-called Puerto Ricans. Judah is my lawgiver. Law that's the head of the southern kingdom. And that's actually the head of Israel where the, um, where the, the kingly line had, was supposed to only come from. But when the kingdom split, Ephraim became, you know, the head of the northern kingdom. But the Lord saying all of these things are mine, man. So the, the Native Americans is the Lord's, man. The so-called Native Americans, the so-called uh, uh, Latinos, respectively, all the way down from 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 Mexico to to, to Chile, and all the Machu Picchu, all that stuff, man. And then they brought them the the the, the Haitians. They brought them over here. They came with us, with the uh, so-called Negroes. All right. Because the original inhabitants and, and, and those uh, West Indians too, the Jamaicans, because the original inhabitants of those islands were the Puerto Ricans, you know, but that's going somewhere else. I'm going to grab, uh, this is Isaiah 11 and 11. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. To recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Because Israelites, we scattered everywhere. All right. You go to you go to anywhere in the world and Israelites there, whether they know it or not. But the thing is, the, the Lord said that he would make us as the sand of the sea. He would make us, you know, what I'm saying to be fruitful and multiply. And one thing that Israelites got the spirit to do, and that's to be fruitful and multiply. You could look at the history of what's going on, even with the Native Americans when they was uh when they was getting oppressed, when they was refusing to uh to mate and procreate in certain uh circumstances, when they would choose death and all that, they still their birth rate was still in the positive. All right, 
You look at everything going with so-called Negroes, with, with, with the violence and the drugs and the prison, the birth rate is still in the positive, you know? So we everywhere, and, and, and we, Israelite men are desired the most among all other men. So Israelite men deal with women of other nations. People been, Israelite men been joining the Navy, you know what I'm saying? Spilling seed all over the world. It says, uh, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now, the ensign is the men of the Lord out there teaching the truth. All right. That's what the ensign is. All right. It's, it's, it's the truth. It's the Bible, but it's the it's the proper, accurate breakdown of the Bible. All right. So the nations getting eight, getting the information that the Bible speaks concerning them and the outcast of Israel. All right. It says from the four corners of the earth, because we scattered among all the earth. That's why you see seeing various brother brothers wake up and sisters wake up to the fact that they're Israelites, whether they living in uh, parts of Africa, parts of Europe, parts of Asia or India. All right. It says. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex, uh, vex Ephraim. So we not uh, the Lord taking away that curse slowly but surely from off his people. And one of those curses was that uh, that our eyes would be evil towards our brothers. You got the you had gang, you had Latin kings. Versus the GDs. That was one way. When I was in high school, we actually had a, a race riot. All right. It, was, it, it went from being gang related to race related. You know. Predominantly uh, Judah and Issachar, though. But the Lord said he's going to end that. All right. <clears throat> and he's doing he's doing that now because people are waking up and and realizing that what we Israelites, we brothers. All right. It says, uh, yeah, that's, that was it that I want to uh, get on that. Let me see. What else I want to get? Mm. Mm. I guess I get all the scriptures I originally want to get. Let me see. This is Genesis 35 and 11. And the most I said unto him, I am God almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins. Right. So the Israelites, the 12 tribes, we are one nation, but we so big is like we are, we are our own nation. All right. But we that's one of the lies that the uh, that's been told to us and propagated to us that we ain't connected to each other. We 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 all uh, separate from each other. The Puerto Ricans, they got their own the the the, the Mexicans got their own so-called blacks. Got their, no, we all one nation. We just that big because the Lord said, uh, be fruitful and multiply. That's the that's the spirit he put on us, you know. Uh, what else I grabbed? Uh, let me see. Ezekiel 37. Let me see. I'm going to start at uh, 7. 37 to 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. All right, so this is a, a vision Ezekiel is having. And he saw a valley of dry bones, and when he prophesied into that valley of dry bones, the bones began to form and connect into people, into persons. The bones connected to the, where they went to the joints and the sinews and the flesh and the tendons and the muscles, you know, uh, uh, came all together. Right. And he said, but there was no breath in them. So if you ain't got no, if you can't breathe, you, you dead. You still in a dead state. Yeah, you you ain't as dead as you was. You ain't no dry bone. 
but technically you still dead. All right. It says, uh, in which that that's a parable representing that some of these people come into the truth and they don't get it all. All right, they don't get the the, the breath. The breath is that uh invigorating force, all right, that can that completes the 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 coming of the, the bones and all of that. You know, like uh like I what was that? I don't I ain't I never saw the movie for real, but little tidbits of a Frankenstein. When he put him up, when he put Frankenstein all together, he needed he needed to hit him with that lightning. All right. That lightning is what did it. And in the, in the truth, that breath is what do it. And that breath is the, to, the totality of the understanding. So you got people saying, oh, well, it's only all black people. It's Israelites. Uh, Gentiles can make it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, you ain't you ain't got the breath. Yeah, you might know this. You might know a little bit of Hebrew. You might know the, the Lord name. You might know a couple of scriptures, but you got to have everything. Because like, even though like, the bones came together and they wasn't just dry bones but they actually came together and formed a person without that without that breath they still you still dead it says uh so i prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet and exceeding great army and the remnant or the hopeful elect they gonna have the breath all right then he said unto me then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up, come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought ye up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. Because ultimately, when the Lord put his spirit in us, we're going to be perfect. All right? Because the spirit of the Lord is perfection. And what's, and what's perfection? And perfection is righteousness. What's righteousness? The laws. All right? Statutes and commandments. So the Lord going to directly put that with, within us. All right? And then place us in our own land. We're not going back to Israel without being perfect. We did that before. We did that a few times, actually. We went there from Egypt. All right. Then we went to, uh, uh, in Babylon and Assyria and all that. But the, 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 the last hurrah, we're going back perfect because we ain't leaving again. We ain't going to captivity again. He says, uh, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick. And write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Right. So that's how you that's the southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. It says, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. That's 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 Ephraim, Manasseh, uh, Gad, Asher, Nephtali, Zebulon, uh, Issachar. Am I missing one? I might be. Uh. Missing uh, a few of them, you know, I think I'm missing two of them. But hey, that's the that's the northern kingdom, respectfully. All right. Uh, Simeon and Reuben. There you go. Simeon and Reuben. And it says. Uh, and join them one to another into one stick. That's why we out there with the with the 12 chance start. And that's that be the that's still to this day. That's the main uh, eye, eye catcher. You know, you, you, we got the, the signs out there with Caesar Borgia, uh, uh, Jesus with devil horns on it, with the scriptures showing you that our Lord and Savior named one Jesus, and he didn't look like the image portrayed around the world. So a lot of people take offense to that image, but it's still the sign is the main uh, attention grabber, you know? It says, uh, it says, and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, "Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Yes. Yeah, so when people come up, they always look at the sign. How y'all, when the first thing they say, well, how y'all know that? How y'all come up with that? Or where y'all get that? They say something according to the sign. Or where the, where the white man at, you know? 
It says, say unto them, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and the stick. So like you, and they shall be one in my hand. So with that, Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson to the whole fool elect. Call Allah him La, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shad, by Hashem Rekakudash, which is to say all praises to the Most High in the name of his son, the Most High name Yahweh, his son named Yahweh Shad, and Rekakudash, his Holy Spirit. Uh, 